So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at balancing equations and the stoichiometry that's associated with it. Okay. Now, you can calculate number of moles using mass and molar mass. You can calculate concentration using number of moles and volume. And that's great, but very rarely will you get a question whereby it just be a calculate the number of moles of this or find the concentration of that. What they'll ask you to do is actually use an equation to use a number of moles to find the number of moles of something else. And that's where this balancing equations and stoichiometry comes into play. Now, balancing equations is something that you will have done at GCSE. And you know what? It scares a lot of people, but it really, really shouldn't. So I'm going to go through four different examples now on balancing equations and then talk about the stoichiometry that goes hand in hand with it when I've finished. So let's take a, uh, a simple equation, one that you're going to come across a lot, especially in titrations. So we're going to look at HCl plus NaOH, and that should give us NaCl and H2O. So that's a very straightforward acid base reaction forming a salt and water. Now, in terms of balancing equation, the name of the game is to actually get the same number of atoms of each element on either side of the equation. So what I would always do, you know, if you're just learning how to do this, is write this down as you go. Obviously, as time goes on, you'll learn to do this in your head. But just for the video's sake, and what we've got over here, okay, we're gonna count up the number of each atom of each element that we have. So we're gonna start with hydrogen. There's one in the HCl. And of course, there's one over here in the sodium hydroxide. So that gives us two hydrogen atoms on this side of the equation. We've also got one chlorine, we've got one sodium, and we've got one cheeky oxygen, like so there. So that's what we've got on this side of the equation. On the other side, we'll do them in the same order. Well, actually, we've got two hydrogen in the H2O. We've got one chlorine in the sodium chloride. We've got one sodium in the sodium chloride, and then there's that cheeky single oxygen there. So what we can see here is that we have two hydrogen, one chlorine, one sodium, and one oxygen on both sides of the equation. So this is actually balanced. There's nothing we need to do here, but I'm just using this one to show you this is what we're looking to achieve for any equation that we're looking to balance, these being exactly the same, okay? So the name of the game, is to find the same number of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. Quite simply, what goes in must come out, okay? Because, you know, you can't put one chlorine in and expect two chlorines out if that was, uh, if that was the case in the equation that you wrote initially. So what we need to do is find a way of balancing. Now, what we're going to do is moving on to an example now where we do have to balance it. So under certain conditions, methane, CH4, will react with chlorine to give us CCl4, so that's carbon tetrachloride, and HCl, which is hydrochloric acid. Okay, so looking at this equation here, we'll do exactly the same as we did at the top. So we've got one carbon here on this side. We've got four hydrogens and we've got two chlorines, okay, Cl2, that's diatomic there, of course. On our uh, product side, we've got one carbon, so far so good, but this is where it starts to go a bit peak tong. So we've got one hydrogen, only one hydrogen coming out of this equation. And not forgetting, there's chlorine in both of these products here. So we've got Cl4, so that's four chlorines here, and one chlorine there. So we've actually got a grand total of five chlorines. Now, looking at this equation, it's of course not balanced. I mean, this is the equivalent of maybe, you know, four hydrogens going in and one hydrogen coming out. That's like putting a, I don't know, a dozen cupcakes into the oven. And when you open the door, there's only like four in there. Okay. That doesn't happen. So things just don't disappear, which is why it's so important that we actually balance these equations. Okay. What goes in must come out. So let's have a look at balancing this. Now, the first rule is you cannot change the formulae of these different things. So we've got, I don't know, let's say five chlorines coming out over here and only two chlorines going in. What we can't do is just go Cl5 and just change that to a five because, you know, Cl5 doesn't exist. You can't change the chemical makeup or the formulae of these, these reactants and products that you have in the equation. What we can do is change the amount of these that we put in and that come out. 
So the rules are, we're aiming to get the same number of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. To do that, we can't change these small numbers, i.e. the formulae, but what we can do are put coefficients, put large numbers in front of these formulae just to change the amounts that go in and come out. So the first thing we'll do here is balance our hydrogens. Now I would always try and start with an element that only exists in one of your reactants and one of your products. You're not always gonna get that, but if that's the case, I would always start there. So hydrogen being in just one reactant and one product, I'm gonna start there. So I need four hydrogens and there's only one hydrogen coming out. So I'm gonna start by putting a big four there. Now that multiplies everything by four behind that number. So what that does is it changes that to four hydrogens. But let's not forget, I've actually multiplied HCl by four, not just H. So now I've got four chlorines. So what I've done is I've actually changed the number of chlorines as well uh, by accident here, if you like. So I've got four chlorines here. I've now got four chlorines over here, four times one Cl. So that's eight chlorines we've now got in total on this side. Okay, you'll find that a lot. When you change the, the amount of one element, you change the amount of others. So we've got four hydrogens and eight chlorines. Fine, let's take a look at this side. So one carbon hasn't changed. We've got four hydrogens, jobs are good. But now we've only got two chlorines on this left-hand side. So how am I gonna turn that to eight? Well, these come in packages of two, so I can multiply that by four, and that gives us eight chlorines on this side. So what we have now is a balanced equation. So one carbon, four hydrogens, eight chlorines, and the same on the product side, okay? So CH4 plus four Cl2 gives CCl4 and four HCl. Whenever you finish balancing an equation, doesn't matter whether you're doing AS or right at the end of A2, you know what? In university and you know scientists working on the most up-to-date things that they can, will double check their equations once they've written them, okay? So once you've done it, once you think you've balanced it, double, triple check it. On to a, a third example here now. So let's take P4O10. And reacting that with water will give us something we should be familiar with, and that is phosphoric acid, H3PO4. So again, we'll do what we did just above. We've got four phosphorus. We've got actually 11 oxygens. There's 10 here and one here. So that's 11 oxygen and only two hydrogen. In our phosphoric acid over here, there's no other products being made. So we've only got one phosphorus, which has been made here. We've only got four oxygens and only three hydrogens. Now, this might look a bit of a nightmare, but trust me, it works out quite easily if you follow these rules. So I'm gonna start with the phosphorus because that's only in one of our reactants. Remember, the oxygen is in, is in both. So I'm gonna start by multiplying all of this by four to get four phosphorus atoms on the right-hand side. Now, of course, what I've done here is multiplied everything by four. So I've now got four phosphorus, I've got four lots of four oxygens. So four times four is 16 oxygens. Now I know I've only got 11 over here. We'll worry about that later. And of course, we've got four times three hydrogens, which is now 12 hydrogens that we've got on this side. If we turn our attention over here, our phosphorus is balanced. That's why we did that in the first place. We've got 11 oxygens and two hydrogens. Well, I'll tell you what, this hydrogen is on its own. If we try and change the oxygens, we're trying to you know, figure out, well, which one do I change? I don't know. So we'll stick with the hydrogens. We've got 12 hydrogens over here. So what I'll do is I will multiply this by six to get 12 hydrogens over here. Now, of course, what I've done here is I've multiplied the oxygen by six as well. So now we've got six oxygens over here and 10 over here. So that actually gives us a grand total of 16 oxygens. So it's all worked out and you will find that this does happen, okay? So our balanced equation, P4O10, 6H2O, gives us 4H3PO4. Now, one last example here. What we've got is a very common question. Aluminium, again, under certain conditions, reacts with oxygen to give aluminium oxide, the formula of which is Al2O3. Of course, we've got one aluminium and two oxygens. 
over here we have two aluminium and three oxygens. Now they're a bit of a mismatch there. Okay, so I'm going to start by changing our aluminiums. Of course, what I need to do is multiply this aluminium by two to get two Al. Now two into three doesn't go. I mean, you know, you could multiply this by two, but then we'd end up with you know four oxygens on this side and three on this side. We end up with a bit of a mess. So what I would suggest you do in this situation is just use 1.5. Of course, 2 times 1.5 gives us 3. So I'm going to write 1.5 in there. And so that actually gives us 3 oxygens. So this is a balanced equation. Now, some of you are probably screaming and shouting right now, oh, Rich, you can't use 1.5. Well, actually, when you've got these diatomic elements, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, and of course, halogens, it is allowed, you can use halves, okay? But a lot of people don't like that. So when you end up with a situation here where you've got one and a half, what we can do is just like in algebra, we multiply everything by two. So what we can end up with to, to get rid of this half is double everything. So we end up with four Al plus three O2 gives us two Al2 O3. So we've just multiplied everything by two there to give a balanced equation uh, where there's no halves involved at all, okay? And I double check, four aluminium, two times two, four aluminium, six oxygen, and two times three, six oxygen, okay? So there are examples of how we go about balancing equations. So the rules, I'll just put those up here. So what we can't do is change the formula. We're not allowed to change the formula of, of phosphoric acid or aluminium oxide. But what we can do is change the amount of each substance by putting these coefficients, these large numbers, in front. Now what I've written here is really important. We can change the amount of each substance. Now by balancing equations, even at GCSE, uh, what you've been doing is playing with numbers of moles. And this is where stoichiometry comes in. So stoichiometry is the process whereby we can use balanced equations to deduce the number of moles of reactants and products, okay? So these large numbers represent numbers of moles. Think of it that way, all right? So let's just take one of these equations to show you what I mean. So let's take our phosphoric acid equation here. So we've got P4O10. The balanced equation is plus 6H2O, and that gives us 4 phosphoric acid H3PO4. Now, Listen carefully, I am only gonna say this once. Well, maybe a few more times. But uh, if you know the number of moles of one of your substances, whether it's reactant or a product in an equation, you know, as long as you have a balanced equation, the number of moles of everything else in there, okay? So let me show you what I mean. So we've got one mole of P4O10 because there's no big number in front of it there. That's reacting with six moles of water to give four moles of H3PO4. So that's what this equation means. One mole of P4O10 reacts with six moles of water to give four moles of H3PO4. Now these are fixed relationships. Now they're in balanced chemical equation. So for example, if in a question they said, well, okay, in this reaction, 0 0.2 moles of P4O10 reacted with excess water, so you know as much water as it needed to form phosphoric acid. Well, we can find out well how much water was needed and how much phosphoric acid was made because we have a balanced equation. This is a one to six ratio. One mole reacts with six moles. So 0 0.2 must react with six times that amount. So six times 0 0.2 is actually 1.2 moles. Now, how many moles of phosphoric acid did we make? Well, this is a one to four relationship. We'd make four moles of phosphoric acid for every one mole of P4O10. So if 0 0.2 moles reacted, then of course we're gonna make 0 0.8 moles of phosphoric acid. It's a one to four relationship. Likewise, if they gave you the number of moles of product, or if you know the number of moles of product, let's say this was 1.6 moles of phosphoric acid that you made. 
a four to one relationship this time. We need to divide this by four to find out how much P4O10 was needed to make the 1.6 moles. So divide this by four, we end up with 0 0.4 moles. And of course, what we can do here, a four to six relationship, well, you know, that's times, uh, what is it, 1.5. And we can do that, that's not a problem, but equally, now we know this one, we can just multiply that by six. Either way, using the relationship of either of these two, the number of moles of water needed to make 1.6 moles of H3PO4 is 2.4, okay? So these relationships, a balanced equation is absolutely key, okay? So to balance an equation, we need the same number of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. We can't change the formulae, but we can change the amount of each substance. Now make sure your formulae are correct. That will lead you to a balanced equation. If you're really struggling with a balanced equation, it's likely you've got your formulae wrong, so double check those. Once you've got a balanced equation, you can use stoichiometry to find out how many moles of each substance you have. Remember, if you know the number of moles of one thing in an equation, you can find using stoichiometry the number of moles of anything else in there. Really, really important. So in the next uh, you know, tutorials, we're going to look at you know, bringing mole calculations into this and using stoichiometry in a larger scenario.